And I've been sipping coffee for more than that uh, and seen uh, you arrive. Thank you very much for your patience. Um, this is the first in this new series, a new public lecture series, which uh, we're putting on for the Cold War in Southeast Asia. Now, some of you will have been with us the last time we put on a public lecture series, which was on the imponderables of war, uh, which started... Uh, in 2007 and, and spilled over to, no, 2006 and spilled over to 2007. Uh, that was uh, great fun and we had a lot of committed people coming to it, we had very good lecturers and a lot of involvement from the audience and that's what we're hoping for again today uh, and for this series. Um, let's, um, let me just say a, a few brief things about what it is that we're trying to do in this public lecture series. I think that there are so many times when we put our hands out to the public, asking them for donations and so forth, it's about time that we at the university gave something back. I know it sounds corny uh, and contrived, but on this occasion, uh, it really isn't. Um, it really is what we're trying to do. We're trying to give something to you, the general public, uh, and we are delighted, uh, thrilled actually, at the response this evening. Uh, having to turn people away is something which, you know, appalls me. Uh, but it's such a, a wonderful um, situation, really, in some respects, because if there are only a few people here, we would really be rather sad and desolate. Um, however, let me just say something about this public lecture series. Uh, it starts, as you uh, can see tonight, with uh, Dr. Christian Ostermann uh, from the Woodrow Wilson Center in Washington, D.C., and I'll say something about Christian in a few moments. It goes on from here to embrace uh, the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization, which Brian Fowler is going to talk about. It's always going to be the last Wednesday of every month. The only month that doesn't subscribe to that is uh, December, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, but Brian Fowle from uh, the NUS History Department will be giving a paper on Seattle uh, in a month's time. And then in uh, November, in what I imagine will be another huge sellout performance, uh, we're having Professor Tan Tai Yong, uh, the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Science um, at NUS, give a talk on Singapore. Uh, so I imagine we'll be heaving uh, in that. Uh, then we have the, the month uh, of December, which is fallow, uh, Christmas and all the rest of it, Hanukkah. Uh, and then we come to January. And we have one, and the one and only lecture that doesn't fall into this regular monthly pattern. Is that given by uh, the head of the Cold War uh, program at uh, LSE in London, uh, Professor Odd Arno Westart. Uh, and Professor Westart is coming here uh, on the second Wednesday of January. Uh, and again, I think it will be uh, very fascinating to have him uh, come and, and reveal all kinds of stuff. Uh, about the Cold War uh, from his perspective. Um, then we're going to be looking at Malaysia the end of uh, January, last Wednesday of the month. Then uh, we're g with uh, Michael Montesano, uh, who is here somewhere. Uh, where are you, Michael? There. Uh, going to be giving us a paper on Thailand uh, in February. Uh, then we move on to uh, look at uh, the United States in Southeast Asia in March. Um, in April, we tackle uh, the, the whole area of Indochina. And finally in May, uh, I have my chance. Uh, <laughs> when I give uh, my paper on the British uh, in Southeast Asia, uh, not imperial, but very clearly overstretched. Um, but we will, we will deal with that uh, when we come to it. In the meantime, I hope as many of you as possible will come to this, this series uh, because we will be thrilled and delighted to see you. Thank you once again for coming tonight. Now, let me say something about this man over here. I have to consult my notes because uh, I'm not an intimate of Christians yet. Um, but 
this man, young as he is, uh, is director of the Cold War Center at the Woodrow Wilson um, Center in Washington, D.C. He's also just been appointed director of the European Studies at the same institution. Uh, and Christian uh, got his uh, undergraduate degree uh, in Bonn and his PhD in Köln, um, obviously in, in uh, Western Germany, as it then was, or maybe not, um, and uh, did a lot of his work in the United States. And of course, now he is ensconced uh, in a rather important position at the head of this Cold War project in Washington, D.C. So we couldn't really have asked for anybody better to have launched this series than our friend here. Uh, I'm, I'm in hugely uh, delighted um, to have him here. Uh, and I thank very much the, the people who've sponsored uh, this event. I, I'm particularly keen on the History Channel, uh, who have uh, been unstinting in their advertising, uh, and also the Asian Research Institute, both of whom have been really splendid in this. Uh, when you add to that Taylor and Francis or Routledge, uh, the publishers, uh, I thank them for what's going on out there. Uh, and uh, I also ask all of you uh, to just, you know, remember uh, that without you, we can have all the sponsors, we can have all the advertising, we can have anything. It doesn't do anything. It's for you. It's designed for you. I'm glad you're here. Without you, this series does not go. Okay, enough from me. Christian. Thank you, Malcolm, for this warm and generous, uh, too generous introduction. Um, let me thank uh, also the um, colleagues here at the National University of Singapore's History Department, Tony Reed <clears throat> at the Asia Research Institute. Thank you for the invitation. It's an honor uh, to speak here tonight before such a distinguished audience. Can you all hear me? Um, before such a distinguished audience about new findings and approaches to the study of the Cold War that phenomenon that dominated the international system in the second half of the 20th century. For, uh, let me say, I will, um, so that the people in the back can uh, uh, see me too, uh, once we get to q and I'll stand up and um, uh, be able to be seen perhaps from all the way in the back as well. For the past decade, I have had the great privilege and pleasure in fact, fun, to direct the Cold War, okay, to direct the Cold War International History Project at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars in Washington, D.C. That project was set up in 1991 by the senior U.S. historian of the Cold War, John Lewis Gaddis, from, name familiar to uh, perhaps some of you, who like so many of his historian colleagues and interna international relations specialists, had failed to predict the end of the Cold War, but wanted to be among the first to exploit the, by 1990, 1991, opening archives of the crumbling socialist world. Seizing a pause in a conversation at a brainstorming session at the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation in Chicago, Gaddis boldly proposed a clearinghouse project that would collect, translate, and publish the documents uh, from the once super secret communist bloc archives to enrich our understanding of the history of that conflict. That just a few years back had seen two superpowers armed to the gills confronting each other all over the world. MacArthur bought into this idea, and so the Cold War project was set up. Um, and as I've said, I've had the pleasure for, uh, the pleasure to um, uh, work with the project for the last 10 years. Over the next 40, 45 minutes or so, I'd like to share with you some of the findings that have emerged 
um, on the history of the Cold War, with particular reference to the former Communist World Archives. That's where really my uh, specialty, my expertise lies, thanks to the